Dan Abrams is NBC's chief legal correspondent, and Diane Diamond is the executive investigative editor for Court TV and an NBC News analyst. Good morning to both of you. Morning, Matt. Morning, Matt. Good morning, Dan. So how is the prosecution done in making not only the case for molestation, but for conspiracy? Um, I agree with Mike that the conspiracy case has really faltered uh, here, and that was the most serious charge against Michael Jackson. I think with regard to the molestation, the question is going to be how much do the jurors rely on the past allegations because they made a pretty strong case here that Michael Jackson has acted at the very least inappropriately with children the question is are they going to say that's enough in conjunction with the boy's testimony and his brother's testimony to say that he molested this child that he served alcohol to this child with the intent to abuse him now, I think I think this is still a tough case for prosecutors. Diane how do you feel about that you think they've had a tough time as well well, uh, yeah, I think some things have not gone the way they planned. But as far as the conspiracy is concerned, they're not done yet. Uh, I, I don't believe that they are going to rest today. I think it'll go into tomorrow. They have one major witness. I think somebody they think is really strong, a man named Rudy Provenzio, who was inside Team Jackson, began to feel that something was wrong, uh, kept a diary, and even made pretext phone calls for the police department. So, you know, some of the, those tapes may come in. His diary will certainly come in. Um, I, I think but, but Diane, Debbie the Rowe had to... loses the conspiracy. But he, he doesn't care. I De think he's, he's, he wants the molestation. Debbie Rowe, though, really did hurt the conspiracy case, didn't she? You know, I don't think so. I may be in the minority, but she put Michael Jackson on the telephone, calling her, asking her to do it. He had to get a, a draft document signed, uh, drawn up and signed, for her to be able to to break her confidentiality. She had the clear expectation she was going to see her children after she did this. And one of his uh, unindicted co-conspirators was standing over her, making her rephrase things. She didn't admit to being scripted, but there was a lot there. The pro I, I think the prosecutors and... Um at times others are confusing the desire on the part of Michael Jackson's team or the proof that Michael Jackson's team went out there and responded to this video they got people to sit down and say nice things about Michael Jackson with conspiracy which is called public it, relations yeah, it, by it, the way it's not the same thing you just you can't just say hey we got them to make this video we got them to sit down people were making phone calls to one another to get them but to Matt, sit down and talk about it Matt, that's not Matt, a conspiracy listen, Real quickly Diane there are 20 there are 28 overt acts in the conspiracy charge okay if the jury believes Michael Jackson did just one then that puts him in the conspiracy and one of them is he picked up a telephone and told the mother her life was in danger they've heard a lot of testimony just about that let's just end then on the question i mean tom mesero said in his opening statement that the jury would hear from michael jackson so what are the chances he takes the stand boy i i, I if i i can't believe he's going to put michael jackson on the stand I, I i really just can't believe it but he certainly made it no, sound that either. way in the opening statement you agree diane yeah i i can't see him letting Michael Jackson be fodder for this district attorney. All right, Diane Diamond and Dan Abrams. Folks, thanks very much. Right, Appreciate NBC News analyst Diane Diamond is covering the trial. She's Court TV's executive investigative editor. Hi, Diane. Good morning. Hi, Katie. Well, obviously, Jay Leno was called on by the defense to help portray this boy and his family as money-hungry scammers. Was he effective? Uh, no, I don't think he gave Tom Mesro what he wanted. He did not say that they were after money. He said he spoke to the kid, he sounded very groggy on the phone, talked to mom, he thought it was the mother and the brother, and nobody asked for a thing. Chris Tucker it will be the final witness before the defense rests mm -hmm. its case. I know he began his testimony yesterday. What is he likely to say that may help the defense, or at least what are they hoping he'll say? Well, you know, for the first time, I actually heard that the young accuser, the 15-year-old, was on a telephone asking somebody for money, and it was to Chris Tucker. After a fundraiser, he said the boy called and said, you know, we really didn't raise that much. You know, can you help us out? And he wired him $1,500. So I think it's, it's more of that, trying to paint this family as always having their hand out to celebrities. Now, what that has to do with whether or not the boy is molested, that's another thing. Now, it, it, it's not every day when Jay Leno, comes to a trial and testifies and throws out one-liners to the jurors. He's just one of a laundry list of celebrities who have testified for the defense in this trial, including Macaulay Culkin, for example, who was a character mm -hmm. witness for Michael Jackson. What has the impact been, Diane, in your view, of these celebrities? And is the jury starstruck in any way, shape, or form? 
Well, you know, when Macaulay Culkin walked in, I saw a couple of women, uh, female jurors, with big smiles on their face, like, wow, look, here's a movie star. Uh, but remember, Katie, in the beginning, Mesereau read out a list of 500-plus names, names like Elizabeth Taylor, Eddie Murphy, Quincy Jones, Stevie Wonder. So if the jury was expecting this star-studded uh, event, they didn't get it. Uh, it. That doesn't mean, though, that the celebrities that have appeared haven't been effective. Uh, the jury really pays attention attention to them, especially Leno yesterday. Now, I know that Michael Jackson will not testify. Mesereau left the open the possibility during his right. opening statement, but that's no big surprise, is it? No, it really isn't. Most most defendants in a situation like this are always advised not to not to take the stand. But you know, we had all we all had this anticipation because Tom Mesereau said in the opening statement mm -hmm. on two occasions, Michael Jackson will tell you. Well, Michael Jackson isn't telling us in person, but there was an awful lot of video of him run. So this jury has a feel for who he is. And finally, as the defense wraps up its case, Diane, has there been any Perry Mason moment, or I guess for our younger viewers, any law and order moment? <laughs> well, you know, I, I think one of the most effective witnesses here came for the state. All of a sudden, here was the maid son. He's now 24 years old. Mm -hmm. He came after the young accuser. And, and he looked at the jury and he said, it happened to me too. And real it not only happened once, but three times. And real quickly, what's the buzz? Do people think he's going to be convicted? Well, you know, here in Santa Maria, they do think that, but nationwide, if I'm reading it right, I think people are looking for an acquittal. So, right. you know, it's up to those 12 people in the box. Diane Diamond of Court TV. Diane, thanks so much. And this is Michael Jackson. It's not just here in America, but it's worldwide. You know, the jurors have to enter this little tiny courtroom every day just like we do, and they're going to see the sea of cameras out there, and they're, they know how big uh, their judgment is going to be. It's going to resound worldwide. So, yeah, his celebrity is what makes this a big case. People talk about a media circus. It, I mean, we're standing back here waiting for our credentials to get into a courtroom, which is our job. You know, it takes a jury time to get to know their rhythm. Uh, they have been together for 14 weeks, but they weren't allowed to talk about any of this. So to me, after a 14-week trial, this is not a, an overly long deliberation. Um, having said that, I'll tell you, only the Robert Blake case in recent memory has a jury gone this long and actually acquitted. So I would think that uh, the state's probably feeling pretty good right now. However, if it goes on too long, the state's going to get worried about a hung jury. It's a pretty complicated case. There's lewd and lascivious behavior. There's giving alcohol to a minor with the idea of molesting them. But then there's this conspiracy charge, and it's got a lot of elements to it. Um, having said that, I think we might see a verdict this week, maybe. Does that's anyone here, one. does anyone here, anyone know of the existence of these letters? I, I don't. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's, again, I do. speculation. I, do. I don't know of this. I've never seen them. I, don't even, I they, absolutely they, know of their existence. Have Diane, you seen them? Have you, you read them? Correspondent. I, no, I have not read them, but I absolutely so, know that know? that was tops on the list of the DA and Sheriff's Department. Uh, things to look for inside Neverland. Okay. Listen, Larry, but, but these you don't are know letters what they that say. are written in Michael Jackson's hand. They are said to be, no, I've not read them, but they went after them because they're said to to be so sensational and so salacious in nature yeah, that do, this could be a key to the prosecution well, if me, and when this goes to me, trial. Yeah, I want to get a break, but I want to hear what Michael had to say today. This is the Michael Jackson statement. It's written to my fans, friends, and family. As you know, the charges recently directed at me terrib are terribly serious. They are, however, predicated on a big lie. This will be shown in court and we'll be able to put this horrible time behind us. Because the charges are so serious, I hope you'll understand on the advice of my attorneys, I'll be limited in what I can say about the situation. There will be times when I cannot comment at all. No doubt this will be frustrating for all of us. For that reason, I have set up this website to serve as a source of official communications on my case. Any statement that does not appear on this website must be considered unauthorized. You are right to be skeptical of some of the individuals who are being identified in the mass media as my friends, spokespeople, and attorneys with few exceptions. Most of them are simply filling a desperate void in our culture that equates visibility with insight. We will not engage in specula speculation. We will not provide running commentary on every new development or allegation du jour. We intend to try our case in the courtroom, not in the public or the media. 
I thank you for all your support and understanding. God bless you, Michael Jackson. Comment. I think it's great. I think we talked last week, Chris and I talked about him making a statement and then leaving it at that point. There's going to be, there's a, as you said, there's a statement or rumor du jour, speculation du jour. And you can't respond to all those things. He's got to get ready now, how for these charges know, that are going to come. How does he know, Jane? How do, no one knows what's in the letter, right? Well, we haven't seen the letter, so we're speculating on the letter. It's Michael Jackson and his big brother, Jermaine, during Michael's child molestation trial. But according to publishers' reports, Jermaine was shopping a splashy tell-all book in which he reveals the family's concern over Michael's affection for little boys, his drug and alcohol abuse, and even the idea that Jacko may have been abused by his father. Here to talk about it is Michelle Caruso, who's written extensively on the Jacksons for the New York Daily News. Also, Diane Diamond, author of Be Careful... Who you love. Diane, a pretty amazing story. Tell us about it. Yeah, it really is. Uh, it all began back in 2003 when Jermaine Jackson is said to have sort of uh, g g gathered forces with a writer named Stacy Brown, longtime friend of the Jackson family, and they came up with this uh, nine-page proposal. Uh, I've had it for quite a while. Kudos to Michelle for getting it out in the newspaper. It is really dramatic, Joe, I'll tell you. Uh, it, it not only talks about the possibility that the family thought that Michael Jackson might be guilty, very well might have been guilty of these child molestation charges, but that they worried for the safety of his own nephews that they saw him interacting with in a strange way, his drug abuse. Uh, there, there's a part in here telling us why Michael Jackson hates Jews so much, uh, talking about his uh, uh, drug abuse and whatnot. This was the line that jumped out at me the most. I'll just read it quick. The Demerol, the Vicodin, the Percocet, the Codeine, the cocaine, the Jack Daniels, the wine. Does he really know what he does with these kids? I don't want to tell you my brother's innocent. I'm not certain he is. Now, this is the man. Talk, talk about the document that you're reading from right there. Yeah, this, this is this is the nine-page proposal that Michelle uh, reported on over the weekend, stunning most of America. Uh, it, it really, it's an amazing document coming from the brother who was so out front during and before and after the trial saying my brother was the victim my brother was innocent on, on, on these pages he doesn't say that does it look that way michelle T talk about the impact this has had on the jackson family and how did michael jackson kill this book deal well joe um, i think the jackson family at the time they first found out about this book proposal back in two thousand three when michael was facing the uh... child molestation charges the family was devastated they had frantic meetings um, michael went ballistic and jermaine backed down i think this uh... book proposal threw the family into turmoil but no one more so than michael and Diane Diamond is talking about how they were afraid that he was acting inappropriately towards some nephews. Are you telling me that some of Michael Jackson's own brothers were, didn't like the way that he interacted with their children? In the book proposal, Jermaine talks about having observed um, Michael Jackson hugging his nephews, um, the sons of Tito Jackson, after the death of the boy's mother, which I believe was in 1995 and that he felt uncomfortable watching Michael um, sit on the bed mm. and hug these boys. You know, Diane, what's so sickening to me is the fact that Jermaine came on during the trial, as you said, was beating his chest self-righteously, mm -hmm. saying, how could you all accuse my brother of molesting any little children or acting inappropriately? I mean, I think he even played the race card. I guess this sort of paints Jermaine as... Uh, as a hypocrite, right? Well, let's see. A member of the Jackson family acting in a dysfunctional manner? I'm shocked. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, you hit, the nail, you hit the nail right on the head. He was all over the airwaves talking about, what, what did he say? This was a modern-day lynching of his brother. In the meantime, he had already been working on this proposal with Stacy Brown, who has written other books in the past, uh, saying, in effect, to publishers, hey, buy this book from me, and I'll tell you all about it. I'll tell you the real, what the family really thinks about Michael. Unbelievable. Diane Diamond, Michelle Caruso, thanks so much.